hair, new season, and so many beautiful new trends to talk about, so let's dive straight in. Dopamine dressing. It's the perfect antidote to those neutral, cozy lockdown dressing we've been doing a lot. And one fashion trend for this autumn winter sees us switching to all things very bright and beautiful. From coral, pink, and neon yellow at Versace, to orange and very saturated red at Roxanda. It is the season for a little dopamine dressing. Colour is, of course, very closely associated with our emotions. I do challenge anyone to pop on a yellow dress and not feel a little bit brighter. Or red, for example, always makes me feel very motivated with a healthy dollop of sass. In fact, if you take a look at my Instagram at the moment, I recently painted a wall in my garden a bright yellow, and it does really lift your spirits. So that connection between emotions and colour is very true, certainly in my experience anyway. Saying that, I am traditionally a big fan of very neutral dressing. I find it very elegant and effortlessly chic and it's quite easy to put outfits together. But I am quite excited to introduce a little bit of this into my own wardrobe. After a year and a half of lockdowns, I think the idea of adding in a sprinkle of cheerful colour here and there is really quite exciting. Now what I will say is I think it will be really easy to integrate this fashion trend into your own capsule wardrobes, whatever your budget, because the high street is already hot on the heels from the catwalk and it's full to the brim of a rainbow of beautiful colours. So there's loads to choose from, from all different price points, which is good to know. And on top of that, I'm imagining the selection will just grow and grow as we move further into autumn winter season. As always, I shall link all of my favourites in the description box below so you can have a look at those at the end of this video. Lux layers. No big surprises really with this next trend, knitwear. But the key to making this season slightly different than last year would be the more layers, the better. If you think dripping in knitwear, and you're on the right track. Not so great for those of you who live in hotter climates, but for those like me who absolutely freeze in winter, it is the perfect trend. Now in contrast to dopamine dressing, when you look at knitwear as say a standalone trend, it does look a lot more neutral. They're two very separate trends, so I would say when you're particularly looking for your layers of knit, Try and keep your eye out for the beiges and creams and camel and grey even. Those are the sort of tones we've been seeing with this look. And as a happy bonus, they're never going to date in your wardrobe, which makes it a bit easier if you're investing a few more of your pennies. And as a side note, cohorts are definitely sticking around for another winter. And you could really easily integrate those two trends together. So for example, find yourself a lovely knitted dress that comes with a cohort cardigan. Layer a scarf over the top and maybe even add a duster coat in like a lovely knitted wool as your final layer over the top. And it's that kind of look with layer upon layer of beautiful knitwear in perhaps slightly different tones that when you look at it as a whole outfit together, no matter which kind of wool, whether it's quite affordable or really high end, it always ends up looking really effortlessly chic and very luxurious at the same time. Fair Isle. One industry that hasn't really had a look in in the last couple of years would of course be ski resorts, which might explain why we saw a flurry of ski-inspired outfits from the likes of Louis Vuitton, Chanel and Miu Miu. Think Fair Isle sweaters, stirrup leggings and padding just about anywhere you want to wear it. But the most wearable fashion trend, for me at least, within this ski resort genre would be a Fair Isle jumper. You can pick up some really affordable versions on the high street or maybe support some of your small independents who often have some of the most original pieces. Don't forget to let me know in the comments section below as we go along which of these fashion trends you think you will be wearing this autumn winter. Maybe you want to rock the stirrup legging trends or you're gonna try the neon knitwear or possibly even one that we're gonna to get to, a full length bodysuit. I know, the thought of that one fills me with dread but it's always lovely to have a good chit chat with you all in the comments section below. Supersized jeans. So last season, it was all about loose fitting jeans. This season, like a lot of the fashion trends, the designers have taken it that step further and made it even more extreme. Supersized baggy jeans were all the rage on the catwalk. And although at first thought you might be having mild panic at the idea, when you think about all the other fashion trends that we'll be seeing this season, you can see how it will work really nicely together. And when it comes to the tone of denim you go for, Vogue advises that dark indigo is where it's at. 
Although honestly, I don't think anyone's going to pull you up if you've got a light wash pair of oversized baggy jeans. Getting the shape and fit right is the most important factor. The tone of them is a bit of a brucey bonus if you wish. Now although we say oversized jeans, there are also variations of that that you can pull on. You could opt for a slightly tailored version that gives the waistband a bit more shape, opt for pleats for more detailing, low slung, high waisted, cropped, flared or straight are all on the list, so there's loads of options to choose from. Micro minis. Now Tom Ford, Valentino, along with a variety of other designers, paved the way for the micro mini this autumn winter. So this might be finally the season that I put my favorite midi skirts to one side and opt for something a little bit shorter. As you might have noticed on my channel, I very rarely wear mini skirts, or skirts at all for that matter. But when I do wear them, I've traditionally preferred a pencil skirt, a midi, or a maxi. But in winter, or more specifically when it gets colder and I can pair it with tights, a mini skirt does suddenly become a bit of a possibility for me in my own wardrobe. And I actually quite like that look. As you can see here, I've paired one I bought recently from Mango, so really affordable, with a pair of black tights and my little ankle boots. So this one has been made from faux leather and it retails under £30, so really affordable. And I do like the look of this paired with black tights, I do feel comfortable, and I think that will mix and match with the other tops I've got in my wardrobe already and what I've got my eye on to buy this season. The high street it's gone all out on this trend as you can imagine they would so there's pretty much a mini skirt for every single budget now i must have lusted after this bestseller at Cezanne for a couple of seasons it's one of their essential pieces so they bring it out season after season and perhaps this year might finally be the year that i actually decide to go for it faux fur Faux fur coats, gilets, hats, and bags even were seen all over the runway for this autumn winter. Now I must admit the hats reminded me of some sort of mid-90s raver, so I'm not sure I personally want to recreate that particular look. But on the flip side, a faux fur coat for winter can be super cozy and look very chic while you're doing it, if you find the right one, of course. A cropped version can look great worn over evening outfits, for example, keeping you super toasty and adding a sprinkle of glam. And I do like the longer versions for more everyday wear. Puffer jackets. Gone are the days when they're solely reserved for the side of the football pitch. This 2021, the Humble Puffer has had an upgrade and you'd be hard pushed to find a brand out there at the moment without their own interpretation of it. I actually found this one recently at ASOS, which came in under £100. I do really like it, I'm definitely wanting to go for either beige, white, cream, etc. But I do think this one's coming up a little bit big. Kate had a stunning version, but sadly that is far too out of budget for me, as much as I love it. I also like this one from Le Mer, but my standout favourite was this absolute stunner from Isabel Moron. At the time of filming this video, that actual one hadn't been released to buy just yet on her website. I'd only seen it on the runway. But I'm hoping by the time this one actually comes on sale that I wouldn't need to remortgage my house to afford it and I could actually put it on my shopping list. Failing that, I will be looking at my usual favourites from the high street to see what their take on the trend is. Mango always do great coats. H&M often replicate the runway in a super affordable fashion. Reese always put a great spin on the trends, which I like. And and other stories equally bring something new to the table, which is often very original. You get extra points for styling your puffer jacket with your extreme high-low outfit underneath. And if you're feeling adventurous, your fluffy faux fur hat to boot. Extreme high-low. It's cool, it looks effortless, full of fun, and I think that's exactly what we need this autumn sort of winter. Seen in all its glory at Celine with their big sparkly lampshade style skirts, styled with a simple bummer, jacket and boots. Though obviously that one's not quite suited for the supermarket or school run, I think I might need to tame that one down a little bit to make it truly wearable. But what you can do, and what I tend to do a lot, is look at the essence of that fashion trend and then make it work for your own lifestyle. So for example, I'd find a glitzy top like this and I'd probably style that with a pair of jeans, maybe a nice pair of boots, but that just makes it much more wearable, possibly even everyday wear, but you're still giving a nod to that trend, which is what I like. You'd have that extreme high-low shining through, but in a much more wearable fashion, say, for the local pub. 
Hilo dressing has that wonderful knack of pretty much always making your outfits feel effortlessly chic and classy and elegant, but with that cool up-to-date twist. So I do keep harping on about that style, but it really does work. Polar neck tops. On a similar train of thought, but a much milder option, shall we say, would be the humble polar neck top or roll neck top, making a comeback for this autumn winter. Now I spotted most of these layered underneath this season's trouser suit or micro mini skirt. For everyday style, I'd probably wear mine with loose fitting jeans, maybe adding a chunky cardigan over the top. But when it comes to really easy trends like this, the options of where to buy, the colors, the fabric content is vast. You could go with a fine merino knit, a cotton or cashmere if it's within budget. And this could also be where you introduce a sprinkle of dopamine dressing and maybe opt for a pop of colour with your roll neck so you've subtly introduced that trend as well. The key points for this trend would be to make sure that your roll neck fits pretty snug. You'll miss a trick if it's too loose and it will just look like you've half-heartedly attempted this look. The trouser suit. One hugely wearable trend for this 2021 has got to be the trouser suit. Perhaps having been out of the office for so long, designers, and us for that matter, are all hankering after some workwear for our wardrobes. Whatever the reason, I personally love this trend, and I don't even work in an office. Now I actually found so many trouser suits that I would be more than happy to add into my own wardrobe. So here's a little selection of the ones that are topping my list. Now they're sourced from all different price points really, so there should definitely be something for all different budgets within there, and I've linked them all in the description box below. And as a happy bonus, if you pick yours wisely, not only will it look great styled together, but you should also have some great separate pieces that you can mix and match with the other items in your wardrobe. Victoria Beckham actually had a great interpretation of the trend, while Stella McCartney's version felt a little more menswear inspired with that boxy cut and a nod to the 70s with those flares as well. Now for me personally, I think I'm looking for a straight leg, possibly a crop, um, so slimmer on the bottom half, paired with perhaps an oversized blazer for the top. That way I know I'm gonna get the best use out of those pieces as individual elements with the other items I've got in my wardrobe. And that's the way you should try and think about it. Not only as the suit as one outfit, but what will the trouser portion look like with the other tops in your wardrobe? Will you wear that blazer with all the other bottoms you've got? And if you can tick loads of those boxes, you know your cost per wear will come right down. Craft work. I would say the 70s are one of my favorite fashion eras, so I never mind adding a sprinkle of it into my outfit ideas. And thanks to the ever spinning carousel of fashion, we only have to wait a season or two before it comes back around again. This autumn winter, the trends hark back to craft work, crochet, and a bit of patchwork denim. So more of a homespun vibe to it, really. Again, it's a pretty easy one to integrate into your outfit ideas without it feeling like you're playing dress up. I would add something like this top into an outfit, perhaps paired with a denim skirt, maybe knee-high boots, depending on the weather. It gives a nod to the trend without it feeling like fancy dress which I know is a fine line to get right, but totally possible if you find the right pieces. All in one body suits. Now, even though some of these fashion trends are not particularly for me, it's definitely worth giving them a mention, especially when I think they would look super cool on other people, which seamlessly brings me to the all-in-one bodysuit. For some reason, I've got 60s icon Jean Shrimpton in my head when I think of this fashion trend. I'm not sure she's ever worn one, but I'm imagining she would look amazing in it. Now, I think the trick with this trend would be to throw all insecurities out the window and just go for it with your head held high. If, however, the thought of wearing head-to-toe, skin-tight lycra fills you with dread like it does me, then there are some really subtle ways to interpret this trend instead. I've seen quite a few second skin style tops about recently, Obviously a trend from last season, but definitely still hanging around for another few months yet, and quite probably a much more wearable way to wear this trend. A quick mention for some other new and noteworthy fashion trends we will see this season. Cutouts back again for another winter. Coles particularly have some great options on this look. Florals are back again, but with a much more vintage feel to the print. 
You can never go wrong with a beautiful trench coat and although they never really go out of fashion, they are particularly coming back with a vengeance for this autumn winter. And super sized handbags are another big hitter, which I personally love because it means I can cart around everything by the kitchen sink. A lot of these fashion trends for 2021 are kind of pushing us out of our comfort zone and encouraging us to have a bit of fun with our styling and just throw caution to the wind and try something new. And I think after the year and a half we've all had, what's the worst that can happen? I'm gonna have a bit of fun with my styling this season and hopefully I've encouraged you with some of these fashion trends to do the same. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you lots of inspiration about not only what the trends are for this autumn winter, but how you can interpret them in a really wearable fashion into your own capsule wardrobe. I've really enjoyed taking a deep dive into all the fashion trends coming up and I'm even more excited about starting to style them into my outfit ideas. If you like this video, I would be very grateful if you would show your support with a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed, that would be really lovely too and greatly appreciated. As always, I really look forward to having a good chit chat with you in the comments section below. So don't forget to let me know your favorite trends, the ones you're gonna give a wide berth and those ones that you think you will end up wearing on repeat. So it's always really nice to hear from you all. Have a lovely week, everyone, and I will see you next Sunday.